You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and I have someone who's been on my Greater Brockton before. I have Pastor Roderick Cherry. Welcome back. Thank nice you very much. Nice to see you. Thank you very and much. And you are from HACA. Tell us what it means. Tell us what it stands for. Haitian. HACA -H is Haitian American Citizens Aid. Okay. That was a dream that comes true. Well, that's good. It's good to have dreams. And your dream is now reality. Yes, You're it's a reality. You're involved in helping people. Yes. We were talking off camera before we recorded here that everything started and it's up and running. Yes. So tell us, tell us about it. Um, the opening of ACA in November 3rd was like a plan. We were, we were done in the planning process. And on April 28th, I had uh, another open house to open the classes. And then uh, on May 2nd, that was the first day of classes, uh, I had the opportunity to open two uh, classes for the immigrant community. That's for immigrants only. That the uh, main objective of ACA is to serve immigrants in Brockton. And that is much needed because even though there are multiple groups yes. getting involved, our adult learning center that the city has, um, it, it, it's oversubscribed. It, there's yes. a waiting list for people to go there. And not only that, there's a funding crisis yes, with the Brockton sure. Public Schools right now yes. that the school committee is working hard with the mayor and the superintendent of schools to address. But there's never enough. Yes, so this know. is now another option. Now, you told me that the classes have two different times that people can do it. Yes. You, they can do it like afternoon, early evening, and then they can do it in the evening. So tell us what, what times. Yes, the reason why that I put two uh, different times uh, is because some people work uh, until 3, 4, 5, uh, and some people work until like... Uh, early or they work uh, at night, but they have the opportunities, those who work uh, during the day, and they have the opportunity as well to take uh, classes. That's why I put two sessions, one four to six and six to eight, uh, for give this kind of a variety, kind of choices to people to be able to go to classes. That, uh, that is good. Uh, during my first class, four to six, uh, I think that uh, we have about uh, nine to ten students. Mm -hmm. And the second one, for example, last, uh, not last year, but last night, we had ten students in that six to eight classes. Okay, and you are a nonprofit? Nonprofit organization. Okay. Just, we don't have any funding, anything at all. What, just, what are people, are there fees to take the classes? Yes, only $25 fee can't for be. the classes. That's, you know, administrative fee. That, uh, uh, that they, some of them, that even did not work in, and then I said that they can come for free. Well, if you take a class, and there are establishment classes like at Massasoit and UMass Boston, first of all, you'd have to travel there. Yes. But second of all, it's what tuition and fees cost, so it's five $600 to yep. take a 15-week Haitian Creole class. Yes. If, if, if the other way around, if, if you were learning Haitian Creole. Yes. Um, same with, we have a lot of ESL classes and there's fees for that. I teach at Massasoit, so I okay. know. So this is wonderful that it's, it's that cost effective. Besides the ESL classes, you also have computer classes yes. that have started up. Tell us about, tell us about those. Uh, computer classes is a miracle. I can consider that this this class, this lab is a miracle because when I made plan for it, the uh, computer classes, because what I realized, we had uh, so the need in uh, our community for computer because I, uh, people know that computer is a, uh, uh, a reality these days. Everything that you're doing, you have to go uh, to a computer to do it, even to uh, search for job, to apply for job, to just do all things that you have to do, you have to find a, a, a computer. And that's why I put this computer lab uh, available for immigrants to use, and then they've been using that, and this, that, this one was open uh, on um, uh, May 13th. I mm -hmm. mean, that, that's one on Saturdays from 10 to 12 p.m. every Saturday. And I'm trying to see if I can open more because we have more demand for computer classes. Now, do you, the people that teach the classes, are they volunteers? Yes. Do if you need other volunteers? I need more volunteers. If okay. you are 
uh, like uh, good in computers, you need the help and you have the time, uh, you can let me know because I'm, I'm about to open another section for people to mm -hmm. use, especially on Tuesdays, uh, 4 to 6. That would be good for other people who need computers. Well, I think that's great because um, you might get some students because the students, young people, could yes. teach older folks older like course. myself computer. Okay. I mean, anything I've ever learned has been self-taught. Yes. I took a few computer classes along the way, but the people that knew how to run them better were my own kids mm -hmm. and other young students. The people I teach at the college could teach me other, you yes, teach the true. old dog new tricks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so you got ESL classes, you have computer classes, and you also have citizenship classes. Yes. Talk about that. Uh, before talking about citizenship classes, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the mission or vision of ACA is to, uh, ACA has a five components uh, of, of program components uh, that the first one was the, what we call that the civic engagement. The second one was the um, pathway to US citizenship. Uh, the third one uh, that classes, ESL and queer classes. And uh, the fourth one is a GED uh, uh, training, uh, preparation and training. And the last one was the computer, uh, no, basic skill computers uh, classes. And um, the uh, citizens, the pathway to citizenship, to U.S. citizenship is like a way to prepare candidates who apply for citizenship that uh, can give them some training to prepare them for the interview. That's why that I studied that since uh, two weeks uh, that we already started the citizenship classes. We have about now three students who are about to become American citizens that are preparing them to be ready for the interview. Okay, make sure you let us know when they're gonna become citizens because those are wonderful days at the courthouse and we don't always get told about that. I would love to go and cover that when that happens. Okay. Okay. And at the same time, and I prepare myself, but because the first component that we, we call that uh, civic engagement is a component where I encourage uh, other citizens to register to vote. Mm -hmm. That's why that when they finish with their interview and they become American citizens, I have the applications for them to register to vote. Well, the, my dad came here from Cuba and he has always considered voting a privilege and has always made sure that I've never missed an election. Yeah. Now I got the one minute queue. Okay, phone number, website, real quick, 30 seconds, and then I'll wrap the show. The phone number that they can call is 508-521-0293. And then they call that if they want to email me, they can email me at revjrcherry at gmail.com. Okay, so and, go ahead. And I'm, I'm available uh, to help uh, any immigrant who needs help. And your location? My location is 421 Torrey Street in Brockton. Uh, that the um, location of the church on the walk on Foursquare Church. Right. Exactly. 421 Torrey Street, Brockton, Mazio 02301. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you nice very to much. See you. And nice to see we'll you. We'll keep Thank following up and we'll update people. Thank you very much okay? for the time. You're welcome. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.